<laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's Blue here. You're my boy, Blue. And today we are going to start the run of the Blue's Budget Battle Brew decks that I was talking about earlier, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I'm preparing for the con that's coming up in April, and it is currently February, so I only have a couple weeks to get this done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of these in a row, like I said I was going to do before the Commander deck videos had to be made for people who purchased them. We're going to start with this one, and then we're going to do a run of them, and then at the end, right before the con, I have a, a Commander deck that was supposed to be purchased by somebody. Uh, they ended up living in another country, and the shipping cost was way too high to even get it out there. So I will be offering that for the con. So as far as this video goes, we start off with a mono blue, what I call Death From Above. And it is a typical, from back in the day, just straight flying deck for blue. Uh, it used to be called the Flying Men deck back in the day, but they have obviously upgraded that. So uh, let's go into it and we'll go from there. So obviously the strategy here is just simple. Stick your flyers, make them bigger, and then smash face. Okay, so let's go over what we got and we'll go from there. Uh, we start off, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. We start off with my one drop, and it's a Cloud Fin Raptor. It's a one that casts zero one flyer that has evolved. So anytime a creature comes in play that has either a higher toughness or a higher power than it, it gets a plus one plus one counter. It gets bigger. That's always a bonus. So I got a play set of those. Uh, Vaporkin, it's my two drop. There are some others you could have used, but it was the cheapest for the power of, and with flying. So it's a two one flyer that just can only block creatures with flying. Shouldn't be blocking anyway. Uh, Hinterland Harbor, it's my 3-drop, it's a 2-3 flyer, it can't block artifact creatures, not really worried about that, it's the fact that it's a 2-3 flyer. <coughs> uh, the next 3-drop is an Illusory illusory Angel, it's a 3-drop, it's a 4-4 four, four flyer, it can only be cast if you've cast another spell this turn, so the plan here is to cast something cheap and then cast it. Hopefully a draw spell. Uh, first <coughs> first uh, rare or mythic rare slot is a Kefnet the Mindful. It's also a 3-drop for a 5-5 five, five flying indestructible. It can't attack or block unless you have 7 cards in your hand. That's important. He also has the ability to draw a card, and then you may return a land you control to its owner's hand in case you just, just to get your hand to 7. And it's 4 to cast, or 4 to use the ability. Uh, the, the common 4-drop is a Thunder Drake, so it's a 4 to cast 2-3 flyer, and then whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you put a plus on plus on counter on them. <coughs> so you see the theme here. We're making your things bigger and bigger and bigger as you go. 4-drop uh, long, long Fin Sky Whale is a 4 to cast 4-3 flyer that can only block creatures with flying. Got two of those. Uh, Nibbles of Frost is another 4 to cast. It's a 3-3 three, three flyer that has prowess, so every time you cast a non-creature spell, it also gets bigger, but only until end of turn. And then whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you can tap a creature an opponent controls, and that creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap phase. You can see the control aspect of this, so you're trying to basically tap down their flyers. Curator of Mysteries is a 4 to cast 4-4 four, four flyer. Whenever you cycle or discard another card, you can scry one, and he has cycling. Guardian of Tazim, it's the 5 to cast 4-5 flyer. It's got landfall, and the landfall is whenever land enters the battlefield and under control, you tap a creature and opponent controls. Again, more control. And then, if that land was an island, it also doesn't untap during the controller's untap step. In other words, tapping down your opponent's flyers. But if they don't have flyers to block your guys, tap down whatever their biggest threat is. Uh, counter magic, we have lofty denial. Why? Because it's a two to cast. Always good to have two to cast. It counters the spell unless its controller pays one. However, it actually does it for if they, unless they pay four if you control a flyer, which is what this deck does. So play set of those. Anticipates the first draw spell. It's two to cast, and it says, look at the top three cards of your library. You can put one of them in your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library, so you can go ahead and dig. This is a replacement for a brainstorm effect, where you draw three and then put two on your li on, on the top of your library in any order. Obviously, this is a budget deck, so we went with the budget version. Uh, Divination, again, budget. I wanted to draw as many cards as possible, so it's three to cast for drawing two cards. And then the Unstable Mutation part of this deck. This is something that we used to do way back in 93, 94, when Arabian Nights came out and Flying Men was the one drop. You stick a uh, Flying Men, next turn you put a, a Unstable Mutation on it. Now it's a 4-4, four, four, then a 3-3, three, three, then a 2-2, two, two, then a 1-1. One, one. Here's the thing about the counters, though. So it gives them plus 3, plus 3, then during each upkeep, of, during each of your upkeeps, you put a minus one, minus one counter. The thing about this is with Cloudfin Raptor, you can negate the minus one, minus one counters every time a creature comes in to play that's bigger. So keep that in mind as well. 
And then the rest is just islands. It's 20 islands because you don't want anything coming in tapped because this is kind of a tempo deck. So that's the deck. It's, it's quite simple and it's actually quite good. It actually works very well. However, if you want to go ahead and do some small upgrades to a deck like this, we'll go ahead and go over that right now. So the upgrades are pretty simple. So I'm going to give you a bunch of the different, uh, the converter mana cost uh, tempo style creatures that you can put in here that are flying that will work very well for this deck. So on the one drops, you can go with Spectral, uh, Spectral Sailor because he helps you draw cards later. It's a one to cast one one flyer as well. Uh, Terramander gets bigger, so it fits the theme a little bit more. Uh, it has this ability that gets cheaper and cheaper as you're casting instants and sorceries. It ends up getting, I believe it's plus four, plus four, so it ends up turning into like a five, five flyer. So that's always nice. And then you have something like Siren Storm Tamer, so if you want to play more control back, like a control deck, that'll help counter spells later in the game. So that's the one drop. For the two drop, you can do something like, and if you want to go full on aggro, you go with something like a Briarberry Cohort. So it's a 2 to cast that is a 1-1, one, one, but it's also, it gets plus 1 plus 1 if you have another blue creature. And obviously that's what this deck will have. Uh, Spectral Adversary, it's a Mythic. It When it comes into play, it's also a 2-1 flyer, I believe it is. And I'll have it up here so you can read what it does. It has a whole bunch of stuff it can do. It's really good for, for this. Then you have the option of going with maybe changing things out and going into a Spirit uh, tribal if you want to, and I have made a spirit deck before, but this deck is a little different. You can go that way and put in a Supreme Phantom, which will give all your spirits plus one plus one. And just to mention, the uh, Spectral Sailor is a spirit, so that would fit in very well. Uh, for the three drop, you can go with something like Brazen Borrower. Borrower. Uh, it's definitely good for tempo because it'll return something to your opponent's hand, and then you can cast it at, and it's Flash, by the way, and it's 3 1 flyer. Uh, Cemetery Illuminator is another option you can do for a 3-drop, and I'll have that up there so you can read what that does. And then you have something with a control factor. You can do Glenelendra Archmage, which will also help counter things, but it also has Persist, so it'll come back and you can counter more things. And on the 3-drops, I have to mention Kira the Great Glass Spinner if you want to do, like, it'll fit in the Spirit Tribal if you want to, but it'll also help protect your guys as well. So you can check it out. It's legendary, so you can't have multiple copies out and play at once, though. For the 4-drop, I, I have here something like a Donal Herald of Wings. It's in the Commander set that just came out recently. I'll have that up there so you can read that. Uh, I'm sorry, I messed up. On the 3-drops, I didn't mean to say Glenelinger Archmage. That's for the 4-drop. Uh, I meant to mention, say, Patrician Geist for Spirit Tribal, because it also gives your spirits plus one plus one. Uh, for 4-drops, again, I said the Glenelinger Archmage. Uh, then another one you can do is God Eternal Kefnet. That one is a little bit better than the Kefnet I have in here, only slightly. So what that one does, and I'll have it up there so you can read it, is it helps you cast spells multiple times for cheaper. So you draw your first card each turn. If it's an instant or sorcery, you can reveal it, and then you may... Well, you reveal any card that you draw first. You don't have to if you don't want to, so if it doesn't help you, it doesn't matter. But you reveal the first card you, you draw, and if it's an instant or sorcery, you can, you can copy it, and then cast the copy for two generic mana less. So... You can cast things like Divination at any time if you've drawn it during any turn. The first card you've drawn for one blue. So, there's that. And it will change. So, the good thing about God Eternal Kepnet is you can cast the spell. And I believe, and I'll have the ruling up there if I'm wrong. I believe it doesn't matter if it's a sorcery or not. You can cast it during any time because of the ability. Not, I don't know. I'll read it and, and I'll make sure that that's right. Uh, as far as spells go. So, spells are pretty simple. For draw, you've got things like Brainstorm, Gataxian Probe, and Preordained. They're all one to cast. Uh, obviously, the best of these is Brainstorm. Uh, for Counter Magic, of course, we've got things like Counter Spell itself. That'll replace the one that's already in there. Uh, if you want to go a little more expensive, Mana Drain and Force of Will. So you're going to have free Counter Magic. Always good to have free Counter Magic. Uh, as far as the enchantments, though, so you can actually change out the Unstable Mutation for the new one that people use, which is Curious Obsession, it gives plus one, plus one, and then whenever that... Okay, so that creature has to attack each turn, or else you have to sacrifice Curious Obsession, but whenever that creature deals combat damage, you get to draw a card. So, it's it's a give and take on that one. Uh, you can add some favorable wings in here if you want to make all your flyers get a buff. Uh, it's the anthem for the flying creatures. Or, if you want to add more for card draw purposes... The new card that just came out recently, Wizard Class, so it's one to cast, it's an enchantment, it makes it so you don't have a maximum hand size, which is great with uh, the Kefnet, and then you can, ha it'll help you draw cards, and then if you have uh, the level up counter, I guess is what it would be, 
uh, all the way up to three whenever you draw a card you can make your guys bigger by putting plus one plus one counters on everything when you draw and it just overall helps this deck so and the last thing i'm going to give you as a suggestion for this one is uh the lands castle vantress and mystic sanctuary both from uh uh, Throne of Eldrain, they both are pretty good for a deck like this. One of them helps you scry through your cards so you can have better draws. And the other one helps you get instants back. So those are just a couple of the the, the upgrades that I could suggest for a deck like this. Not None of them are too, too expensive, especially since, you know, prices of the cards are coming down from more recent sets. So just take a look at them, if you will. Uh, other than that, that, that's the upgrade section for this deck. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you're looking to purchase this deck, you can go ahead and contact me in a couple ways, and we can go ahead and talk about it. Uh, we have the Facebook page, Blue Bears Games on Facebook. Email, it's bluebearsgames at gmail.com. Or you can just send me your information in a comment on this uh, video below, and I'll go ahead and contact you anyway. Uh, other than that, if you would like to purchase a deck, or if you know somebody wants to purchase a deck, you can contact me for that as well. These are $20 a piece. I have a whole bunch of them, and these are getting ready to go to the con. So if you want it before I go there, let me know. If you want it after, if it's still available. If not, I will make another version of this deck as I go. That's one of the cool things about these decks is I've made it so the parts are interchangeable. So if I don't have exactly the cards in this video, the next iteration will have something similar, if not exactly the same as what's in here. So that's the great part about doing these decks. Uh, other than that, that's my time for the week. I won't take up any more of your time. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this out to anybody who may be interested in it or wants to see a build like this. And other than that, I will let you go. Have a good weekend. I will see you all next week.